no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempts he any man. God doesn't push you into temptation. What does? Your flesh. Lusting at. Your fleshly lust do. Now watch what he says. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. And now we're not just talking about sexual lust. We're talking about all the other lusts that I listed. Money, prestige, leisure, comfort, food. All these are lust. Okay. Your flesh is desiring. So he says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Spiritual death because you chose to go after these fleshly lusts and you put aside God's will for your life. Can you see the importance of discipling your will? It needs to be something that we all work on, including me. A lot of times I don't want to read. I don't want to study. But you got to fight that urge and say, no, God wants me to do this. This is what I need to do. And rise up above. Now, close to finishing. Discipling our will may not be easy for many, but it will truly be rewarding. A battle in our minds will develop when we begin to discipline our will to the fathers. It's a battle that can be won because we are overcomers by the word of our testimony. What comes out of your mouth? What comes out of your mouth is what you thought. It's a mindset. What you think in your mind. That's what your action will be. Like I said, you wake up, you think, oh, it's raining outside, I don't want to get up, I don't want to do that. That's what's going to end up happening. The mindset. It's a battle. But we can overcome it by the words of your testimony, by what you speak for. No, I'm not going to lay here. I'm going to go to church and do what I'm supposed to do, what pleases the Father. Now, by speaking words of faith into our lives and applying godly principles in everything we do, will produce in us a disciplined mind and will. You've got to speak words of faith into our lives. Can't be just walking around saying, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, you know, it's just that's the way I am. Or I'll, I'll never change. Or that's just the way I've always been. I'm not going to change now. Well, continue to be that way. Miss out on God's blessings. We need to understand that the side of you that is stronger, your flesh or your spirit, will determine your outcome. The one you nourish more will be the one that's in victory or in defeat. The more you expose your mind and heart to ungodly things, the stronger the desire for them will grow. What are you feeding? Your flesh or your spirit? The one that you nourish the most is the one that's going to be in victory. Do you understand that? It's not a hard principle. It's not hard to develop a way to discipline your will. <clears throat> we need to feed our spirit with spiritual food and not allow our fleshly desires to rise over our spirits. Let me list some things to help you accomplish discipling your will. First, 
we must cut off nourishing our ungodly desires. If there's a TV show or a book that you're reading that is ungodly, that doesn't have any godly principles in it, stop reading it. Stop seeing that. It's not going to lift your spirit. You understand what I mean? you got to stop those things that don't bring nutrition to your spirit. Now, second, we need to bring the power of God into our lives by using faith in all situations. Everything that we do needs to be done in faith. Trusting in God. Trusting in His promises. And third, we must not grow weary or lazy in our effort of disciplining our will. If you're going to win in dis disciplining your will, you'll need to take control of your thought life. Thoughts have power and lead to action. You understand that, right? You understand what I'm trying to get across to you. The way that you think is what you end up doing. And then those actions, thoughts have power and lead to action, and those actions turn to habits. Because you thought it, no, I like doing this. I'm going to keep doing it. Now it's become a habit. The fact is that if you're going to discipline your will, you need to pray more, read more, learn to abstain from destructive and addictive behavior. Can't be doing things that the world does and expect godly results. It's not going to happen. Don't work that way. Now, I want us to read a few scriptures before we end. Some of these are going to open your eyes to what God has to say about doing His will. Turn with me to Colossians. Chapter 1. I'm going to read this out of the NLT. Colossians 1, starting in verse 9. Everybody have it? He says, so we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. And our lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Doing His will. Now, we are to grow in the knowledge of God's will with spiritual wisdom and understanding. Now, let's look at another one. Turn with me to 1 John. And we're reading scriptures that are talking about God's will for our lives and doing them. Doing it. 1 John chapter 2. We're going to look at one verse here. Verse 17. 1 John 2, 17. And the world is passing away, and the lust for it. But now watch what he says. 
But he who does the will of God abides forever. Is it important that we do God's will? We'll abide forever. God will keep you and preserve you. In doing His will, we will abide forever. Now, let's look at the last scripture we're going to look at. And this is a very strong scripture. It has very strong words. Turn with me to Matthew. And this is something that Jesus said. Concerning the will. Chapter 7, starting verse 21. These are the words of Christ. Watch what he says. Like I said, these words are strong. Verse 21, chapter 7, Matthew says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does what? The will of my Father in heaven. Is it important? Should we dis discipline our will to do that of the Father's? He's telling you right here, not everyone shall enter. He goes, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not prophesied, we have not prophesied in your name. We have not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done any wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. Wow. Did they choose to do the will of the Father? They chose to do what they wanted. Think about your actions. Your will. Are you going to discipline it to do what the Father's will is? Or will you continue on your own path? The scripture has very strong words. It's important for us to learn to discipline our will to His. For in doing so, we will enjoy a life of fulfillment and joy and peace. The importance of us Disciplining our will will bring satisfaction to our lives. Did y'all understand the importance of us disciplining the way, you know, our thought process, what we think, our actions, our, it boils down to our will. We've got to discipline that will and say, no, I'm going to do what pleases the Father. And choose not to be lazy. Let's just do it. You'll be blessed by it. God will lift you up on wings, man. He, he'll provide all that you need. Just give him a place to do it. Lift him up. Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word, Father God. Oh, glorious Jesus, help all of us, Father God, even including me, Father God, to disciple our will, Lord, to discipline our will, Lord, to do those things that are pleasing in your eyes. Oh, glorious Jesus, give us that strength, that ability that's in us, Father God, through your anointing, Father. Oh, glorious Jesus, that each day we would choose, Father God, to do what is right in your eyes, what is pleasing to you, Father. Oh, Lord, thank you, Father God, for all you've done for us. May you work in us, Father God, and take out of us, Lord, those things that are hindering us, Father. We love you and we honor you for all you continue to do in our lives. Lead us, Father God down your path. Let us do your will over ours, Lord. We love you and honor you, Lord, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Jesus. And everyone say, Amen. Amen.